I think a lot of things get caught up in, in the organisation of religion. A lot, a lot is at stake, money and position in people's lives. And I, I, I read that book, Siddhartha, uh, when I was 19, and it had such a profound effect on me because here was a guy who was brought up, the son of the king, and he had every, he, he did everything. Um, all, all the rites and religious ceremonies and he was brought up spiritually with the greatest knowledge and he realized he had to go out and experience it and find it for himself, that truth for himself. And then finally he comes across the Gautama Buddha who's this amazing Buddha and becomes a disciple. And he kind of knows that this man is a fully realized man but inside of him, after a little while, he says, I've got to leave that. I've got to go and find my truth. That is something that organized religion doesn't ever seem to have uh, space for. The, the great Zen story of the uh, bishop of something going to meet one of the Zen masters and, and he comes up there to ask him questions and he grants him and, and he wants to go and talk to him and he's, he's filling his cup of tea and as he fills his cup of tea the, the, the bishop of whatever is watching and, and it fills and gradually starts to overflow and and he's not sure whether to say anything and it's overflowing, he's spilling everything and he goes, finally he says, the cup is full. And he says, this is an illustration, the cup is like your mind. I won't answer any of your questions because your mind is full and, not, and you're not able to hear anything. <laughs> you know, and I think a lot of religion is like that. Yeah. They might want to ask questions, but it's all from that, mm -hmm, you're wrong, I'm right, because there's not, it's not really a, there's no spirit of finding space. God is, God is us and is not us. It's inside you and me and is outside of you and me. It is everything. I, I, I struggle with the concept, I understand the concept that everything around us is an illusion. I struggle with that because it feels really real to me and the pain and the thoughts and the mind feels incredibly real. But I think I get a glimpse of what that is. Uh, scientifically, microscopically, we can look so close to see there is movement that I can't see movement now and your body looks incredibly real, but there is movement. But I just think the truth is that God, consciousness, is what binds all of this together, everything. And really, through all our ideas, it's quite simply what a gift this creation is everything about it whether it be times where you're hurting or this human experience is amazing it is here to be enjoyed not just the happy times but even somehow the sad times are here to be experienced and fully experienced and i think this creation has been given us to enjoy and uh i think that if we do, that's probably about as close to God as we can get. I mean, I'm fascinated at the end of this to see what you come up with as a filmmaker asking people whether that experience of what God is, is there. And I've spoken to some incredibly wise people. And sometimes the wisest of them said to me, said, you know, no matter what we talk about, don't hold on to it, just let the sound of my voice, just listen to the sound. And somewhere in the sound is the truth. And we're so trained from being this high to go for meaning, to analyze, to find truth, to, to work it out, pros and cons. And I think as we meddle, somehow that truth goes. Oh my God. What a place to ask these questions too. The Aboriginal people, I've read a lot and I'm speaking to them, and they see, they see what they call the magic. They see it in every, everything, they see the magic. And I suppose that's what I mean by is God. God is us, you, me, the land, the creek, the interplay of so many different things that have to make this creation work is kind of, it's magical, it's wondrous.